Hi, right, this is Frankie Pace. I have a special guest tonight. I love this guy. He's a third generation performer. He has conquered every medium of the entertainment industry, starring in film, television, recordings, stage, and as a man of close to a thousand voices in the world of animation and commercials. Or so it seems. And he is still active in these mediums today. We're going to interview my buddy and old pal, Chuck McCann, coming up right now. Hey, Chuck, how are you, my man? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Frankie, Frankie, baby, Frankie, how are you? How are you doing? What's up with you? You're still crazy as ever, man. Oh, I'm... I'm cuckoo for comfort, Oh, God. I saw you recently. I think Where it was... are you, Frankie? I gotta know. Where are you, where are you located now? I'm in uh, New York. I'm in Long Island, oh, actually. Where? Where, Long Island? Yeah, in Port oh, Jefferson. Boy. Oh, I'm so homesick. <laughs> Up here in beautiful sunny California. Oh, yeah, right. That's oh, right. It's sunny there. Of course, the sun's going down out there, right? Uh, uh, yeah, we still have sun. We still have a little good. bit of sun. Okay, good. So I, I, I miss it. I miss it. I miss New York. I was listening to a big band this morning. I was uh, over at uh, the union, the uh, musicians' union, listening to... An 18-piece band, kick-ass band. Uh, uh, Geo Valley, uh, buddy of mine, has this. Oh man, they're so tight, and I, I, you know, I feel like I'm 19 again when I <laughs> when I hear a band. It's just incredible, man. I love big, big band music. You know, of course, everybody likes electronics today and wants the. Uh, they like to play the guitar until the wax comes out of your ears and you collapse, you know. <laughs> I, I, I love, I love, is that a great picture, guy? That's as good as a guy eating the face off the guy, you know. It's uh, listening to music so the wax comes out of your ear and then finally your head caves in. <laughs> I don't know, jeez, I, I might get sick at my old age, I guess so. <laughs> oh, well. What do you do? God, I miss you. I haven't seen you since, what is it, 2000? We used to hang out at Jerry's Deli, you, me, John Nickel, Mendoza. Michaelmas Day. Michaelmas Day. I still see the guys at Jerry's. Yeah. You don't have a, Jerry, you don't have a Jerry's in New York, do you? Uh, no, we don't. I don't think so, no. You've got the stage. Tell me, but it isn't Max Assess. It's not the same stage anymore. Yeah. But a lot of big things aren't the same anymore. But they, they are my memory. i got... You know, I'm 77 now. I feel like I'm 19. <laughs> good for you. I swear to God, I do. I really feel good, man. And uh, but, but I'm just, it's just my mentally, you know, I just keep working at, at uh, working, you know? I know. You, you've been a busy I'm guy. Good. You've been a busy guy, man. I, I, I've been looking over your uh, your bio, and all through the years, you've you've been a busy guy, and you did a lot of kitty, sh a lot of kid shows. I remember Chuck McCann's show in New York. That was a great show, man. Well, that, it was a lot of fun. I, I mean, I really enjoyed doing that. I, I did that for I did the kid shows for about twenty years, I guess, of my life. You know, yeah. The time that I was twenty. Uh, actually, I started very, very early. I started like I was about 14 or 15 when I started. Really? I did, I, yeah, and I did radio. I lied about my age. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear to God. I, I get guys coming up to me 50, 50, 60 and 65, and they go, geez, I watched you, what about, I, I watched you as a kid. I said, well, I was a kid when I did that, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and, and it's true, man, you know, but I, it was just so much fun doing that stuff. I was doing nightclubs at 17 and 18. I just loved to perform. So if I wasn't tying up my grandmother and grandfather in the living room and the chair so they forced them to watch me, uh, I, I went out and did nightclubs and stuff, and then, then finally wound up doing TV and got into puppetry, a lot of puppetry. You had a friend, Paul Ashley, right? You did a lot of work with. Oh, man. Paul, Paul was like my brother. Now you've, now you've got it. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, I, I love Paul. He was like my father, brother, everything. Yeah. He, he was the greatest sculptor in the world. He painted and and. and and sculpted the most beautiful puppets, man. It was great. 
your characters were fantastic. I mean, I'm a little off in Fanny, Fanny Annie, or... Yeah, a lot of people look at me and think, uh, when I say, what did you, uh, what did you, I say, well, I was a puppeteer. They, they look at me like, uh-oh, the guy's a little light, the moccasins. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. I said, no, it's, it's the greatest form of theater. I said, you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's so wonderful. You put, you put puppets on, you become a different person. Put two puppets on, you become that person and somebody else. <laughs> and you switch off into a third and fourth, and you can change characters, you do voices. Yeah. But people say to me, uh, women come up to me, you go, oh, Mr. Ted, you're so good, you're acting and everything. Where can I send my child? To? I said, don't send him anywhere. <laughs> get him, get him. <laughs> a, a hammer and saw, let him build a puppet stage, get him some puppets, you know, because you direct everything yourself, you act and write everything yourself, you light it yourself, you learn all forms of theater fight. Right, right. Okay. right. But you're, you're you're not fooling me. I know you're a great actor because I remember that movie you made. Well, you made a few of them. The Projectionist was one of them, and The Heart is a Lonely Hunter with Al, uh, what was it, Alan, um, forget his okay. name. Yeah, he's, he, to me, he's like the world's greatest cinema star, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I unfortunately turned out to be a bum. I was a cinema bum. <laughs> <laughs> a cinema bum uh, with sugar. How did I hope? Anyway, but I, yeah, I, lo I, love, I love doing that movie. That was my first film. And it was, I, I, you know, it's really crazy that they picked me to do it. Yeah. But uh, Alan wanted somebody who wasn't a big name, who wasn't going to upstage and be, you know. We're talking about Alan Alder. Uh, no, Alan Arkin. Oh, Alan Arkin. I'm sorry. I'm, why am I thinking of Alan Alder? I have no idea. I, I don't know. You, you, you've been watching MASH reruns. Probably. <laughs> Alan Arkin. That's right. You're right. I'm sorry. I take that back. I know his father, Alan Arkin. Mm-hmm. Really great. He was a burlesque singer, Alan Alda. Really? People don't know that. A lot, of, a lot of these guys that go, oh, Alan Alda, yes, I remember him. I'll tell you how old I am. I remember his father. <laughs> <laughs> I remember his grandfather. His father, his father was a fabulous singer and, and performer. Yeah. He, he worked burlesque. He worked a lot of burlesque theaters in New Jersey and stuff. Um, you remember that? You always learn the burlesque. That was where the girls came out naked. That would be great today, you know. Well, it'll you know, probably I come back. That, you know? It'll come back. Uh, you know, a, a little to the imagination. And he would come out and say, A pretty girl is like a melody. You know, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, they'd, they'd come strutting out on stage in their various feathers and costumes and stuff. It was a great time. Of course, I grew up with all of that anyway, with the Roxy Theater. My dad was there. What did your dad do? He was a musician and an arranger. Oh. He played, oh. played trombone and violin. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was with Whiteman's Orchestra. And I remember Whiteman coming to the Roxy. And uh, I would sit with uh, Mike Picator, who was the banjo player. I, I'd sit there and play with him. You know, I mean, I'd just sit there and... and uh, and watch them play. What got you? What got you started? I was playing, you know. What got you started in the business? What made you decide that you know you wanted to be a puppeteer, or did you start out as a puppeteer, or were you a comic first, or an actor first? I was actually a comedian first. Uh huh. And I was doing nightclubs, and but you know, in 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 nightclubs, there uh, where I started. Uh, and I started about the same time, I guess, well, I remember going to see, I, I worked the Valley Stream Park in, that was out in Valley Stream, Long Island, and Carl Huppel owned that, rest, uh, that, that nightclub. And it was called the Valley Stream Park Inn, and then they had another one, uh, Carl had another one called Stephen's Steakhouse. And uh, then at Frankfurt Square, there was a place called the El Mambo Club. El Mambo, I heard of that. Yeah, well, the El Mambo Club was next to a carpet place. And I, and I swear to God, the El Mambo Club, I think, well, the guys didn't talk like this, you know? <laughs> so I worked I worked that place, and uh, he, he came up to me, hey, you're doing good. I said, thanks.
thank you, uh, Mr. Lachetti, and uh, thank you and goodbye. <laughs> no, 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 you're coming here next week to work first again. I said, no, I've got another job that I, no, you don't. You're coming <laughs> to work for us. <laughs> right, Rocco? <laughs> yeah, he's coming to work for us. And then I, I wound up uh, doing eight weeks there at the El Mambo Club. Yeah. There were other clubs down the street. There was uh, the Top Hat and uh, the Parrot. There were a couple of places. So I worked all of those clubs around there and then out on Long Island and then out in, uh, in Brooklyn, the 802 Club. And uh, we call it the Buck of the Blood. That was, uh, oh, I mean, it was unbelievable. I, had one, I worked one place where they had nothing but motorcycles come in and uh, that was it. They... I said, where's the audience? They'll be here, open the back doors. <laughs> and they all came in, I swear to God, and watched and, and sat on motorcycles. <laughs> How do you say? It was called the easy spot. It wasn't easy for me, man. I tell you, it was awful. And uh, I mean, you could die from the fumes. I said, I did not cheese. Go on the fans or something, you know? I used to work with a guy named Hank Garrett, who I see all the time out here. Oh, Hank, yeah, I know you Hank. Remember, you remember Hank? Yeah, you? yeah, I stayed everybody, with him. Everybody came out here to survive, you know. Right. We, we, we spent our lives at Hanson's on uh, 1750 Broadway. Bobby Darren and I used to write together there. Yeah. And I introduced Bobby to his wife, in fact. But he doesn't remember, he didn't remember, and neither did she. She, she, well, she remembered, but I, what happened was, you want to hear the story? Yeah, sure. I guess so. We have nothing but time. You got right. a lot of commercials? You want to no, you can commercial? keep, good. don't worry about it. Just Am roll. Okay. All right. So anyway, well, maybe I should do a commercial for you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, wake up. No. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Hey, don't forget Chuck's website. That's Chuck at ChuckMcCann.net. Yes, go in and see what Chuck is doing now. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I, I do a lot of stuff with Tim Conley, and I'm running around the country. And I got my, oh, I, I just put up a, oh, I got a book coming out. That's right. Uh, it's called Chuck McCann's Scrapbook. It's, it's shameless of me. I'm doing plugs for my hey, Why not? Why not? I would. And, I don't care. Yeah, why not? I don't give a shit. Do whatever you want, man. Come, out in June. Good. It's, it's actually not a ripoff. It's got pages in it. Really? They're blank, but <laughs> they, have, they have all pictures of my show, and uh -huh. let's have fun. It's called the Let's Have Fun Scrapbook. Oh, good, good. And if you go into my website, which is Chuck at ChuckMcCann.net, or just go into Facebook, I'm in Facebook, Chuck McCann. Right. But if you go into Chuck at Chuck McCann dot net and you can uh, there's a link right in my website to uh, the clubhouse and you go in and sign up for that. And I just put up some great stuff uh, and uh, I was working late last night doing it. And then uh, also in the website is the uh, is the is the uh, the, the bookstore. Uh -huh. They're selling the book, and they're selling pictures, eight by tens. All right, don't overdo it now. Now you're over. Now you're overdoing it, Chuck. Chuck, you're overdoing it now. Come on, come on. We gotta get Tracy's in there. All right, crime. Two-way wristwatch radio. I wish I had the theme song. We play that. You got a full dog job. Now that you've lost your audience. <laughs> you sick bastard. <laughs> I'm not terrible of me. What up, friend? Anyway, so, uh, uh, needless to say that uh, the website's a lot of fun. Yeah. I just put up last night, I did a commercial for uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which won the Clio. Mm -hmm. I beat Michael Jackson out for that thing. And it, it was out of 29,000 entries. I was, I was picked as the best act. This is sound like an ego trip. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'll never win anything in my life. My mother wound up, uh, she, the only thing she ever wore, uh, won, she, she used to take these chances, you know, everybody take, uh, 
little before the, I'll take 12 chances. Okay. And then I come to, uh, 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 now, and you go to church, and the women saw, you know, and they announced, uh, the, the, the priest would announce it from the altar. been hanging out with Rick Overton, huh? Rick, yeah, I see Rick a lot. Yeah, I just... I love Rick. Oh, man. Ricky uh, and I go to a place called Jinkies. Yeah, Jinkies. He was telling me about it. And uh, it used to be where Killer Shrimp is. Now, you know, I know that the some blogger is sitting here, uh, sitting in Thailand somewhere saying, what the frick are they talking about? <laughs> Yeah. I've been getting I've been getting a, a lesson in between because I'm not on the road with Tim Conway all the time. Oh yeah. We go all, we go all over the country. Is is Louise you know. is Louise DeWart still with you? Is she what, doing that that show? Who? My wife? No, Louise DeWart. She used to play the Carol Burnett oh, yeah, character. No, of course Louise is doing it. Yeah. No, it's it's just the three of us, that's all. We go out and do an hour and forty minutes together. Cool. Oh yeah, oh Louise. Yeah, yeah. I would mention Louise, and you had to jump in and and and, and make me look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> when you see Louise, give her my love, will you? I will well, give a big hug for you. I don't know how a husband will tell me, but <laughs> hey, don't my what? <laughs> you know, no, I love Louise. She, she's so brave, man. Yeah. She lives back east. She, she lives up in the. Uh, up in the uh, uh, water, water town. I don't know where it is. It's on the water there, uh, out on an island. Oh, Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, Martha's there. Vineyard. I was at her house. Oh, oh, okay. Well, don't give her a dress for crying. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just uh, cut that out. Don't worry about it. It's still pre-taped. Oh, no, no. You leave it in. I love Louise. He's going to cut out. He's going to cut out all my profanity. I'm going to hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me about the Playboy Mansion. I'm dying to find out. You're one of the few guys that can get in there. I always try to get in there. Yeah, I went there for 40 years. What a waste of time. <laughs> I swear to God. No, I mean, really. I mean, it is stupid. I, I spent most of my life there. I don't go there anymore. I really, I, I wasted so much of my time going up there four nights a week and watching old freaking movies with with Epnack. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, how many times can you see Harold Lloyd safety last, you know, <laughs> or any of that? I mean, geez, you know, holy man, poor Ray Anthony sitting there with him, you know, everybody's kowtowing to him and, you know, uh, oh yeah, oh, that's great, Ep. oh, wonderful, oh, geez, Ep, you watched this last week, you forget? <laughs> well, it's good at that point. But anyway, I'm beginning to sound like Don Rickles, my buddy. Look, Don, I see Tony as manager all the time at the, uh, and I talk to Donnie. He's just, he's just, Don Rickles is one of the funniest people. He started at Stephen's Steakhouse around the time.
time I saw it. They call him the Emperor. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. so funny at that time. I mean, and he still is, man. He hasn't lost a, a beat, you know? I love that. He's so funny, man. He's so great. He's up there now. He's about... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. He's, he's 12, yeah. you know? Tell me about Yarmy's Army. Did, did you start that? Did yeah, I was one of the beginning of the founders. Mm -hmm. uh, Dick Yarmy was an actor, and I did a movie called uh, with uh, Ernie Borgnine and myself. Ernie played my brother. And, and uh, Carpool was called. Mm -hmm. You see it, you probably won't. You know, it's one of those movies of the week, you know, and right. that, that's it. It goes to eternity. I think they put them on, they're going to probably launch it into space. You know, <laughs> gonna, hopefully somebody will see it one day out there on another planet. Because I don't know whatever happens to all these films. Uh, they, they just keep making this crap. And, uh, I, you know, mm. they, they, they go to basements and rot, you know. But anyway, the... Uh, Harvey and I did this movie together, and it was called Carpool with Ernie Borgnine. And it was very, very funny. It was a cute movie. And anyway, he was in it, uh, Yarmy. And uh, Dick Yarmy was Don Adams' brother. Right, okay. And uh, anyway, so when Don passed away, Dick Schmuck, all right, boys, I'll take it, please. You know? Right. So, uh, wasn't that good? Yes, it sounds just like uh, it. Yeah, I still have my chops. I can still do those funny boys. No, I forgot my pups. Come here, Johnny. Get your cocoa pups. Oh, <laughs> hey, that, that was your big... <laughs> that was a commercial you made uh, You made out pretty good with that commercial. Yeah, I just want to see your equipment explode. When I do that. <laughs> <laughs> the needle bends, you know, it like wraps around the... Anyway, yeah, I did okay. Every emperor, it's still running. Uh huh. The only thing that now, now I'm still doing in this <laughs> century. Dickie Army, Dickie Army, let's get back to Dickie Army. Oh, okay. <laughs> dead, you know. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Dick was uh, in the bed. Uh, I was in the bed, and Dick Army played the cop after I got uh, my, my neck almost cut off by a wind. You gotta see the movie. Anyway. Right, right. So, uh, I, I meet Dick. Dick and I had the same agent, or wire, at the William Morris office. Mm -hmm. And Betty was handling uh, Dick also, and uh, she handled me. Right. And uh, later on, uh, I couldn't stand being with my wife as my agent. You know, it's uh, it never, everybody goes, oh my God, he did wonderfully because of his wife. I did lousy because of my wife. You know, the last thing that she thinks of is you, you know. <laughs> so you're always better off with another agent. And I was. I mean, years and years and years. Yeah, year. yeah. But anyway, I, went, I, I don't think I even went with, uh, was with my wife at that time. At the very end, I was. She, she handled some of my, my, my affairs. Yeah. And uh, because I had an affair with her. <laughs> <laughs> We had a wonderful life. <laughs> We're still together after 39 years, so yeah. it must have been right. Anyway, so he comes to the army and he says, Hey, I really feel home and down in the dumps. Will you have dinner with me? I said, Yeah. I said, why? why? Why do you feel so bad? So I just got my report back from my doctor and I've got cancer. Oh. It's bad. Yeah. So I, uh, Howard Storm and. Uh, Myself and about four of the Bob Ridgely and about one or two others. We, we met for dinner and we all had a great time cheering him up. You know, just, just having laughs, not even talking about it. And the next thing you know, there were eight of us the next uh, time. Uh, so four went to eight, then I went to 16, then I went to 32. And we had about uh, 40 people that would come. And then we had to cut it off then. And then 